The views expressed in the following show are of the host, the guest, and the callers. The content of the following show, its accuracy, authenticity, and the ramifications of the use or application of said content is the responsibility of those speaking and listening, not the broadcast medium. Feet to the fire, I'm your host, James Othianchik, the Black Knight of Talk Radio, doing a special afternoon edition uh, here. We're... um, We were originally going to record this and post it later, but then we got this live kind of bug hit us. So here we are live in the afternoon, a Sunday afternoon. Actually, nice weather here, by the way. It's in the 40s, sunny. All the snow was gone when we got buried, so that's cool. And tonight we're going to be talking with Zeph Daniels. Now, I I became aware of Zeph during the Trump elections uh, in the beginning, and that is when I listened to his podcast, which he's been doing... uh, uh, for like 16 year anniversary coming up, I guess, uh, and so he. Um, that's why I've got to meet him and uh, listen to him, and it was really cool because it was really a real time play, both spiritually and uh, and uh, politically and, and whatnot um, during the um, during the election cycle. So a little bit about Zeph before we get to him. Zeph was born into an elite family at an early age, became a failed victim of satanic ritual abuse and mind control. However, the programming failed because of the spirit within Zeph. Later, he became involved in writing for film and television in the horror field. He claims these were attempts to find out what actually happened, who he was, and what went wrong. It took about 25 years for total defeat of the old person, the death of what of that fragment of tortured humanity, and his resurrection in the spirit of God through Jesus Christ. Zeph is a musician, composer, writer, podcast commentator that is hard to pigeonhole. <laughs> He's speaking, he speaks passionately from his heart and soul, and you, see, you uh, see, hear, and feel what you get. He's real, uncensored, raw, and powerful. Unashamed to say he was saved by grace through Jesus Christ, yet calls the Christian church on the carpet for abandoning their first love. You will not get a high and mighty preacher here, just a truth seeker in love with God and humanity. You can find Zeph's work through Spreaker, SoundCloud, Podbean, under his name. You just look up Zeph Daniel, Z-E-P-H. And his written commentary and, and whatnot can be found on his Facebook page, again, under his actual name. So I would like to welcome to Feet to the Fire, Zeph Daniel. Let me hit the magic button and... Boom, there he is, live. Hello, hello. Uh, good to be here. And, you know, even though that some of that is um, hasn't been updated, that any of my I bio, I, you know, I'm not really good with all that stuff updating. It's still it, structurally, you know, that's the, the story. It, it's it's when, when you say the spirit within me survived, um, I guess that's it. I guess some people just don't go through to the other side, you know? They fight back. And somehow, the really miraculous thing about me is I'm actually sitting here talking to you. And when the odds were that that, that shouldn't be because of, of going up against, you know, people that are, uh, you know, we coexist in our society with people. When I say the other side, I mean the satanic side, and then we're on God's side. And they're on one team, we're on the other, and, you know, they have, a lot of people find this hard to believe, but they like to uh, do away with us if they could. <laughs> so it's a battle, you know, an external battle, but it's also an internal battle, you know. Anyway, it's uh, good to be here, and it was nice to meet you, too, uh, when, uh, on the on the Trump thing, we, we, we became kind of like kindred spirits there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's it's been a... It's a, been a really great year, and it's a watershed year, an unbelievable year, some kind of a change of just, wow, across the board. And then, but it's fraught with danger and and peril and, and uh, you know, sides ramping up and divides and just, it's just, you know, and then, of course, we've just had this shooting, which has been, you know, then used uh, to, to promote, um, you know, taking away freedoms and things like that. So I'm, it's a, it's a great time to be alive, but it is an apocalyptic time. It seems to me. Yeah. It's, uh, we're, we're living in the curse. May we live in interesting times. And it sure is interesting. <laughs> sure. But what I find, what I find kind of interesting is as I'm watching all this stuff, it seems that 
whatever is being done to try and break the spirit, both of, we'll say, the American in general and in the, the uh, God-fearing in particular, it seems mm-hmm. like whatever they try to throw at them, it ends up kind of blowing up in their faces. And it kind of reminds me of that Ten Commandments movie. It's my favorite movie. When uh, the Pharaoh was going to say something and Moses said, uh, whatever you say will come back at you. And so he mentioned about the firstborn being died, uh, killed. And uh, whatever they try to do against Trump and against this movement, it seems to just kind of fall right back on them. It's it, it, it's supernatural. It, it's uh, It happens so many times that you can't just say, oh, well, you know, it's just luck of the draw. I mean, every time someone even, you know, just, just like, the, you know, something, even a smaller example, like the Olympic skier, and I'm not going to go to the White House. Well, you ain't going to the White House. You didn't get gold, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And it, just a little thing like that, just it's, it's delightful, but it also has frightening implications that we're really in a, we're really in that spiritual, you know, supercharged environment. And and uh, the great thing about that is anything can happen. And then you know the scary thing about where we are right now is anything can happen. And so it just makes me want to push into the Lord just ten times more, and really just try to be as obedient as I can. Just try to really hear the word of God and, you know, read the Bible and just try to be led by the spirit. Cause I don't have a roadmap through this thing. Do you? <laughs> no. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, 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 think, I was, think, what did I do? Leaning on the table. Oh, okay. What, what I think, um, uh, kind of is, is that we're in a point where the future is completely undetermined. I mean, nobody except God, and I'm referring to like angels and demons and people don't know what the future holds. We're on this precipice that anything could happen and yeah. that people who are the wise will be foolish because they think they know what's going to happen and they, they do these plans and they fall apart. And so what I've been doing really is kind of living by the seat of my pants, which I think probably we should do all the time. Just kind of live in faith and just go for it. But, you know, you, you're, you have to make plans and all this stuff. Yeah. And it, it, in a way, it's it was disturbing at first, but it's a little bit more relaxing to realize that there's nothing I can do about it except just be in the right place at a time and do what I should do, and that will come to me at that time. So it's kind of relaxing at the same time disturbing. Yeah, you're in, and you know, funny, we our paths haven't crossed. You've been in radio 16 years now, or this is your 16th year yeah. now. And so you started about a year after me, but right in that same zone where a bunch of us started, we were like the early podcasters, Right. you and me, and then Rich Keltner and Frankie was with us. And then a few others got into the kind of Adam Curry. Remember Adam Curry back in that day, the pod father and all that, and getting into the podcast, which gave the power of uh, free speech and, and free ideas back to the people. And it, it, I don't think that the enemy who doesn't like free speech, uh, realized there would be such a revolution. I'm, I'm sure when they came out with YouTube, they just thought it would be like fun little, like watching people hula hoop and, you know, just, uh, you know, going on a vacation somewhere and, you know, uh, just, you know, sort of shallow stuff like that. I don't think they thought it was going to be used as an actual broadcast TV alternative news platform when they started. Yeah, there was no YouTube. There's no TV. In fact, I started on Live 365, and then I was picked up by a, a an internet radio station that was that was nation or worldwide, mm-hmm. and it was it, the, its thing was no censorship, and so like the lady before me was pornographic, right? So then I come on after her with a Uh-oh. kind of an art bellion Uh-oh. format, and I had to kind of like explain to the listeners to not tune in too early because she was like very explicit, right? But, uh, you know, and then it just – actually, actually, at one point, I was on a network and was getting syndicated and all that, and the whole network fell apart. And from that moment on, I was just on my own. Mm-hmm. Besides, I, it's a blessing because look at the people who have, quote, made it, and half their show is advertising stuff. You have a boss you got to answer to, uh, you know, and so forth. So my success personally is that I could do whatever I want, when I want it, how I want it, and – to me, that's not been monetarily successful, but it's been a blessing in creativity. 
Well, it's a blessing to anybody that tunes in and, and it's a, to hear actual free, free thought, unencumbered by commerce, that you're just talking from the heart. That whenever I see anyone speak from the heart, I am personally blessed by it. I mean, it, I may not even agree with what they're saying, but just the fact that it's going on is, is it's just, I cherish it because I realize, especially lately, how they would like to take that away from us. It's, you know, the last couple of days, I mean, if we just zoom to, to now, it's the speaking. last couple of, of days they have, uh, you've been banning accounts on YouTube. Um, yeah, I had my little input this morning. They've been banning these accounts on YouTube uh, if they mention or they show the Parkland, uh, um, you know, survivors who are now left-wing sort of Red Guard Chinese style uh, advocates of gun confiscation and left-wing politics. And if you disagree or you say something like, if you even mention the name even, they'll just not only take you off of there, but they'll actually scrub your video uh, as well. And, you know, try to eliminate that video from the web altogether. Um, this is just something that, um, I, you know, it, it, it's a desperate move. I don't think, I think, I think uh, our friend Charles, who chimed in with me today on the Zeph report, I think Charles uh, had it. He said, this will probably backfire on them, this idea of censorship, because what it's going to do is it's going to galvanize, uh, you know, the, the, the people that, that, that do like free speech, patriots, et cetera, Christians, uh, free thinkers, conservatives, constitutionalists, you know, the usual, the usual bunch. It's going to galvanize uh, all of us to, to really, um, you know, fight for that free speech. So I would expect to see, like, you know, lawsuits and, and, and you know, all kinds of blowback on this, because it's just unprecedented. What, what's happened in the last 24 hours is completely and totally unprecedented. And um, we, I know, I'm sorry, I keep moving the table. It's unprecedented in um, uh, in, in in the in, well in our history of free broadcasting on the internet. It's it's just Google has gone nuts. Uh, Twitter has gone nuts. Facebook is a little bit more subdued. Uh, they they're not banning, but they're they're kind of trying to use algorithms to to put people in a corner where their stuff, with where their thoughts, their ideas, their posts doesn't really get out to the public. It it, it just it, it you know it remains more or less contained. And so I don't know what this means going forward. I just know that they're really hot on this gun confiscation thing. I mean, they're really, it's really not about gun laws. It's not about Trump. I mean, Trump was so, so funny when he addressed it. He goes, well, we're going to ban bump stocks. <laughs> and, you know, it's just like they, they're just driven so nuts by him. It's, it's unbelievable. And to say something like that is just, a, it's, it's so far a few. Okay, I'm really going to help you guys out. You know, you want to confiscate. I'll tell you, we'll get rid of the bump stocks, and everything will be okay. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's 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 just um, he's funny. He's got such a sense of humor, but this is a real fight, and they're going after the youth. I remember uh, a lot of the celebrities, uh, you know, that that I, I won't be watching again because I just I'm really you know not that interested. Uh, uh, people like uh, Jennifer Lawrence going out. She said, "I'm going to go out and talk to the youth. I want to." You know, and so what they're doing is indoctrinate, like they indoctrinate the, this guy from Parkland, you know, and, you know, I'm not going to mention a name now, now just because I don't want you to be banned, too. But <laughs> Yeah, I don't um, know about that. You know, so I'm not going to mention, but they're, 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 the, the guy sounds like, I, I don't even know, it's like, you know, spouting these sort of uh, Marxist, um, whatever you want to call it, and, 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 you know, just, what did you call that, Mar Marxist... Uh, uh, platitudes. platitudes, Marxist platitudes, and and um, you know that he's learned obviously from from you know the the, the Ellen Show and we have wherever where they've been they've been all over the place partying uh, after being survivors, and I've never seen anything so bizarre and so frightening as that partying as those pictures as uh, being sponsored and coddled by the CNN and the news media. I've never actually seen anything that. Uh, that weird, you know, and and then of course, the programming of, you know, the leftist programming of gun confiscation, the hating of Trump. You know, I talked to Trump on the phone, and uh, and he's a he's a horrible person. He didn't do anything to comfort me, and and he's you know all this 
almost pre-programmed to do all this stuff. Okay, I'm not going to touch the table. <laughs> and uh, sorry. And and um, it, it it really is. It, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, this was a big shooting. This is 17 people dead. This is also apparently going on while there's a, a live shooter fake drill with blanks. It's also going on where there's sheriffs hanging around and all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, people, including people in uniform, hanging around. And uh, the guy walks in, takes out the 17 people, and now we have this whole drama, this whole fight, immediately goes to gun control, gun confiscation, immediately goes into politics, and um, it's it's a um, immediately it goes straight to free speech right off the bat to deny people uh, their their First Amendment rights and the, and the Second Amendment rights as well is what they're after. And now it's this very stark war. I mean, we are in a war. It's a, there's no other way you can put it. It is a it, right. It's not a shooting war right now, but it is a very violent, um, fast moving uh, war. I just don't know what's going to happen next. If um, I had, do have on the screen, if you want to read about some of the things we're saying, uh, the red elephant dot, red elephants dot com has that article we were talking about without naming the names. And I've actually removed some of the names from it, uh, but they're mm-hmm. still a little bit there. You see them, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that had it. Also, I wanted to bring up, um, I just found this this morning. It's on IntelliHub.com. And, you know, a lot of these links I want to mention that I, I don't, this isn't, whenever I put a link in there, it doesn't mean I endorse the link or not. It's just information. Mm-hmm. And in the, in the page, which I have up here, let me go to it. Uh, let me switch uh, screens here. They have an interview, and I really recommend people uh, see this interview. They have an interview with a teacher who was there, and she described uh, things. It's on GMA. They had this. So the interview was taped. But they they put it on the live show GMA, unedited, or, or I'm sure it was edited because they recorded an interview. But the part I'm talking about was left in where uh, she says, let's see, uh, where's the quote? Suddenly I saw the shooter about 20 feet in front of me standing at the end of the hallway, actively shooting down the hallway, just a barrage of bullets. And I'm staring at him thinking, why are the police here? This is a strange because he was in full metal garb, helmet, face mask, face mask, bulletproof armor, shooting his rifle that I've never seen before. She says this on the camera. And I'm like, what? Yeah. That's huge. And and it goes right past the interviewer. Doesn't mention this at all. They go back to GMA and, uh, with Stephanopoulos and Robin, I forgot her last name. And they're talking about her interview. Nobody says anything about this. I thought, this is huge. It was out live. And I, I, I actually screen captured the video in case it disappeared because they probably didn't, you know, they're having an agenda. We got to talk about the human interest side and how these kids were killed. We're going to put it up for gun control and all this. So this part just kind of slips by. And a lot of times I call this, um, God gives you a window to the soul. It's like this accidental little opening where you go, <gasps> and see something that wasn't meant to be seen. And I'm wondering how fast, I know when I posted this, people have been posting it left and right, so this may go away. And I wanted people to make sure they actually watch it and see this part, because the, the lady, as you watch the interview, she's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And um, so here, you know, now I was thinking maybe they'll try and turn around and downplay it and say that, well, he was one of the guys who was, on the drills that were happening, and he happened to show up, but no one mentioned that. And the guy's shooting down the hallway? Who's he shooting at? In full metal garb, and he yeah. just got out of, what, the Uber drive? He got in the Uber with all the body armor on? Well, yeah, I know. Obviously, it's a different person, but it's I'm a different thinking, person, how are they yeah. going to explain this away? Because she seems rather calm and credible. And so I'm thinking if they say, well, it's one of the guys who were here for the uh, drills was still mm-hmm. around— well, then, what's he shooting at? And there was, I mean, there's no kids in the hallway at all, and he's shooting down the hallway, and there's no kids there at all? Who is he shooting at? I mean, it opens up so many cans of worms. So my guess there's is they're going to just try to apply it angles. More. So I want to encourage people on uh, all forms of alternative media here to get this story out there. Yeah, and then, you know, we have other witnesses saying there are three shooters, and, you know, so it, the picture that I got, got was that there's two fake shooters and one real shooter. 
and the real shooter just happened to show up during the drill. And then he starts shooting people and they die. The other shooters may have had blanks, like that guy shooting down the hallway and been dressed up in that, that oh. whole military thing. And it could, I mean, she, she didn't mention. She was grazed. She was grazed? Her arm. Okay, well, then we really have a problem. What's and um, so now we really have a problem. So this is the kind of thing that makes me lose sleep is, you know, the more data that comes in, the more disturbing it is, the more it starts. Look, James, it goes to this idea that there's pre-planning in the killing. It's just inching along toward that. What I don't want to go there, but it's pulling me toward, you know, uh, it's just same thing with the Mandalay shooting. I mean, we had multiple shooters. We had. Uh, all, you know, all kinds of people verifying that, all kinds of witnesses, and then they just covered it all up. And and Trump took action behind the scenes of rounding up South. I don't know how many people got killed down helicopters and various things that happened with that. And I'm just wondering. In this in this case, we saw Trump and you know, and Melania, the first lady, going to the to the to the uh, to the hospital and give, give, thanking the first responders and. And all that's going on, and 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 then he's saying, yeah, these first responders are great. This is a real tragedy. That guy that didn't, that stood down, the deputy that stood down, he should have been in there, helping the kids. And so it, it's just a really, it's hard to talk about anything else today because this is such a nightmare, and the American public isn't really, and the news media, whether you take Fox News, CNN, any of these news media. They're just not dealing with reality at all. Not the first thing close. I thought of when I saw this video was that it was somehow faked where somebody trying to catch somebody was put this lady's face in with the graphics and all that. I know it's far-fetched, but I got to check it out, right? Because, and here it is right on Good Morning America's Facebook page. The actual interview was right up there. So it's like, okay, it's legit. Right. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> and I wrote on a comment on here. It's it it had all these shares. There's been ten thousand thumbs up or whatever, two hundred fifty comments. Now I wrote a comment on her, which apparently was the last comment because I just refreshed it, and I said, "Isn't anyone struck by her saying, quote, she saw the shooter and that he was dressed in full male garb, et cetera, before the police got there?" No one said anything, and still four hours later, unless they disable comments or what have you, no one said anything. So I'm like, it's like. You can see it if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, apparently. Yeah, you don't see it otherwise. That's another weird thing. You 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 don't see the truth. It, it's right there in your face. We have witnesses. So what they do is they shut down the witnesses. They shut down the videos of the witnesses. They try to expunge the, the, the videos of these witnesses off the Internet, and they just can't seem to. It's like the Lady Macbeth out, out, damn spot type of thing. They just can't seem to remove all the, 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 the damning evidence. So does that mean... Does that mean that the media is complicit in the cover-up of a crime that they in committed, or is it just this guy just decided to get into an Uber and drive on down to the school during a live shooting drill where he was allowed to shoot everybody, and then they moved in afterwards and they arrested him peacefully? I don't know. I just—and, and, 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 will we ever, ever learn the truth? Because if this is true, it, it, look, if the really dark stuff here is true, there is no way that uh, we could go on is that we, we have to deal with this. We can't just go on to the, to the midterm elections and go on with the next phase of the United States, whatever it is, and just kind of forget it, right? I mean, right. we have to, we, we can't, and look at 9-11. I just was going back to 9-11, and I, I kept I watch, watching the um, the video of, you've probably seen it, the uh you know, the missile hitting the Pentagon. And I just played that today over and over again. I'm just watching that. I, I've never saw that before. You know, and it popped up on Facebook. Okay. And I'm like, oh, it's the first full. And if you saw the little clips that the Pentagon released, the explosion do match up. You know, so it's like a legitimate photo. It's obviously a missile. And it's like, where has this been? Someone said that they saw it a few years ago. I'm going, this is like the smoking gun, no pun intended, of yeah, what hit right. the Pentagon. And it's like, Right in plain sight. It's like they don't care anymore. Uh, it's right in plain sight. I watched it. I was like, I wonder if I played this in movie theaters or baseball games or football games or basketball. It put it on the screen up there. If anyone would, if it even register, 
You know, I'm going to find it right here. We're talking. I I have the video here, if it's still there. And I, I would like to play it in, in this video for some kind of a record. Here it is. Let me switch to this web page. It's nice that you can do that. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Let me get this proper. It's unbelievable. So it's coming in. It's ground level. You know, feet off the ground. It's You can see it's not a plane. There's no wings. And when it hits that explosion, when you go Perfect. online and look at the couple of frames that uh, the pen, uh, the government released, that's the right type of an explosion. Mm-hmm. So where did it, you know, in fact, you see somebody had said that where it starts, you see there's like a building there or something. There, uh, mm-hmm. Somebody had said that there was some kind of building built there. So this was shot like right from that building, let's say, and that building was taken down. During those uh, uh, during that day, but it was never in any pictures anywhere because they were focusing on the building. Now I, I just I'm just mentioning what someone wrote me, but um, I mean this is the stuff we're talking about. Stuff is is it's like you can't hide anymore. It's like right. you can't just ignore it. It's so if you do, you've made a choice. In fact, what I say spiritually speaking is that what's happening now it's the revealing the apocalypse and all that. But the real terms is that. Okay. You can no longer stand on a sideline. You have to make a decision. You have to be on the light or the darkness. And if if somebody just says, I can't deal with this, they're going to drift into the darkness. And that's like their choice. And it's... Uh, it's the, the people of the darkness, though, don't want drift, people drifting into the dark. They want to, you know, unless you want to just be their slave. So yeah. they're, they're not interested in, you know, doing you any favors. <laughs> so it's... Uh, it's a it's a it's a real bind we're in, but like you said, apocalypse. This is the time that I think Jesus was, you know, meaning when he said that everything that was hidden will be revealed. I mean, and then Trump, the great unmasker, he seems to be uh, able to unmask everybody, everywhere, everything, and and so that everyone's naked. So what do they do? The other side, the the the, the dark side, they go on as if. It's covered like it used to do, but it's naked. Mm-hmm. And everyone's saying, oh, Emperor, you have a beautiful new set of clothes on. And they're all kind of playing along like nothing is exposed. And that's the most amazing uh, to watch that happen. But God's not done. He's he's There's something with the United States. I mean, I know people say the United States is not in Bible prophecy, and, and probably they're right. Uh, but— there's something God is doing here on behalf of his people. He's got people here. He's got, we're, we're like agents of the Lord, you know. He's got his people here, and he's doing a work here. And it's um, it's confounding the, the, the hell out of these people. I mean, they are absolutely uh, just flummoxed at how, how, how nothing works like it used to. And... Um, And in fact, it works less now than it did six months ago. It works less now than it did a year ago. And as we progress further, it seems with every passing month, more and more is exposed. And so the only way they know to strike back is with force, right? And, you know, indict people they don't like, quash on free speech, lock her down, showing they've had the power the whole time. And, uh, you know, they're playing on that other team. That team is... uh, you know, the d- team of the demonic, the team of the uh, satanic hierarchy, and they've been playing on that team and their secret societies and running the earth and, you know, le- le- laughing that, that people think they have some say over their government or over the, their lives, but um, they're losing it. So I'm excited about that. At the same time, it's a time of peril, and it's a time where God's people really have to be, in, in my view, just completely, you know, just like sold out totally. It's like, Lord, your will whatever you want to lead me to do, how, however you lead me to do it, that I have no will of my own anymore. I don't have any plans. I'm just here for you. How Use me, Lord, and I'll go where you want me to go, because at this point, I don't see any way out, but I, it's so over my head, the, the things we're seeing right now. It's so, so, so far yeah. over my head, over my ability to... I know. I, I'm sorry. Trish keeps telling me to stop moving the table because the laptop is on the table. Yeah. So you use your hands a lot. Yeah, well, my my hands. My yeah, just... if you can if you can keep them up in the air, you know, so go like this. But, uh, <laughs> but I love it too. I mean, I've been waiting all my life 
for an answer. I mean, I wrote a book in, uh, that I didn't publish it. I almost published it, and then I, I guess I chickened out. Um, and uh, I hope I don't find that book again lying around here. <laughs> but uh, it was a book about a, you know, it was almost like a memoir of myself going through this whole thing, trying to understand what the hell happened. I mean, what, what my, you know, going back to my own history, what my own life was being around these people, I guess they were beholden to secret societies. And, and um, yes, the, 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 all the things you hear about, satanic abuse of satanic people, sacrificing people, all those awful things, witchcraft, uh, uh, by the elites at the upper echelons in Hollywood and all that, you know, um, you used to call those people the LA mafia and I, you know, and that doesn't mean the Italian kind. And, uh, yes, they're involved in everything that people say they're involved in. And I don't know if they're still going at it, but, but when anyone would challenge the system, okay, in those days, it was, you know, especially kids that were in that system, it was either off to the to the loony bin, off to the mental hospital, or death. Uh, be, and there's a reason for that. It's because you can't have, and that's why you, you know, people don't understand. You know, they, 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 they it's a lot of these kids disappear because they know something, and even if they know someone that knows something, they're also vulnerable because they can't afford for the, the, the tastes and habits, the way, their, their Babylonian way. They can't afford to have that ever be public because it's completely lawless. And yet to get into these places, to get into these clubs, to get into these guilds, to get into these uh, uh, groups, um, requires you to do something so awful that uh, they've got it on you and you can never, you can never leave. Once you're in, that's it, you're, you're stuck there. And so that's why they can't just repent. I mean, I'm sure many of them would love to repent. And many of them, you know, many of these people, they don't do any, they're, they're not the, they're, they're happy to be lower on, on the ladder and maybe not be the ones, you know, doing the awful murders and things like that. And then the ones who want to be more powerful will do more bad things. It's like every bad thing you do, you get a little more power, you get a, a little higher notch on the ladder. And all this has been exposed from all these different angles. By the angle that I had was this subjective trying to trying to survive. And so I became aware of things like we want to talk about gang stalking today. Well, the gang stalking element of it is that once you piss that thing off uh, and are targeted, I mean, it's like then they take they actually gamble. I, I, the Lord brought to memory this one this one guy that died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he died about <clears throat> he died in 2014. He was a fellow classmate of mine. And there was a very painful situation where I, I somehow wound up at a party at his house and really his parents' house. And we were kids. We were like, you know, teenagers. And um, all of them were on that side. All of them were on Satan's side. And basically, they were just trying to set me up as some kind of a, a victim or whatever or force me to join them or do some, some kind of thing. And he was like <laughs> – he had some exchange or some kind of thing where he was gambling – on how long I would live versus whether I join them or live or whatever, right? You know, and figuring I wouldn't figure out what he was doing. And, you know, it was right in front of my face. It was that literal. And then he contacted me, and, and this is, I hadn't seen him since then, you know, and then I, I had my own perils that went on after that. You know, they, they, you know, they did do the whole thing they do is, you know, they try to institutionalize you and all that stuff. So I hadn't seen him in all these years. And finally, he saw me on Facebook in 2012. And he goes, and he, I'll finish the story. It's kind of hardcore. He goes, uh, wow, you've been on a journey. You've been on a long journey. Like, like I'm going to come home now. <laughs> you know, I'm going I'm to come, you know, I've, you know. And so he invited me to a school reunion of a school I had dropped out of. Uh, and... Um, you know, he, um, like that, you know, it was like another setup, like that party. It was almost like he had learned nothing. I mean, so he was there trying to get me again. And the funny, weird thing about that reunion, that party is they made a video and I was able to, in 2013, look at the video and see my old classmates now 
you know, aged and whatnot, very revealing. And he was there bouncing around, just, he became a doctor, I think. His father was a doctor. And, um, you know, they're, they're very revealing. Some of these people, that one of them was actually looking for, for some kind of redemption and wandering around and just, they were disturbed. But I could see it, it took place in a house of probably in Bel Air, someplace like that, Beverly Hills, I don't know, someplace, some nice house somewhere. And they were drinking and, you know, talking. And, and the video wound up, I don't know, on, on YouTube, I don't know why I see things like this. I, I wasn't looking for it. Well... And then I learned that, that one year after that, he dies suddenly. And then I squelch it out of my mind, you know what I mean? It's kind of a triggering thing. I just, I just didn't want to go back there and uh, deal with all that. I just didn't want to think of, I, I just didn't want to think that I was there at his house that time. It was this setup and it was scary as could be. And, uh, and so just two nights ago, the Lord brought it back to memory and the Lord revealed to me, you know, I had to go, I had to look at the whole thing and be honest with myself that, you know, uh, yeah, he was gambling uh, on my life or whatever, on how long I would live, you know, and they were laughing and, you know, they, they were all experts at all this, you know, and uh, at, at, at 17, at 16, you know, it, it's, it's hard to see people like that, like they take a mask off and they're really just that, that evil. And um, he thought he was going to live on because he was a doctor and he was healthy. And at that 2012 reunion, he was bouncing around and very uh, gregarious with people and very social. And and then the Lord brought it all to. I never really brought all this to memory till about two nights ago. And then then he died just suddenly and shockingly. And then of course they they uh, they mention it. They're dying. You know, a lot of them have died. And the Lord showed me that um, his life was cut short because he must have died at, let's say, well, I'm almost 16, it would be uh, two, three, four. How, how long ago is that, Trish? It's like, that's a long time ago now. It's 2004 years ago. Four years ago, he'd be about 60 years old. 60 years old. And, um, and I, I don't ever like to talk about this because this is nothing I wanted. But the Lord basically took him out, you know, it was like, he had a chance in 2012 to maybe come be honest or maybe change or something when he ran into me. I mean, it was like, because I've been on this path. And instead, he tried to put another setup together, just like when we were kids. Mm. I didn't want to look at that. You know, I, I couldn't believe it, first of all, at that age. What the hell, you know? And um, and then it was like, then suddenly, you know, w without warning, boom, he's cut down. And probably he thought he had a lot longer to go. Most people around him, because there were more videos and stuff later, uh, they, they were shocked that he died. So they, they thought he, had, he looked like the, the pillar of health. And then now he's gone. And, you know, the only conclusion I have is, did he know the Lord at that time? Did he... Did he, did he care or what, what was he doing? Why, you know, so there's all kinds of weird stuff like that. And when, 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 you know, this tracking me and harassing me and all this stuff that was going on back then, all this supernatural stuff, that was like harass, harassment um, was going on because I wasn't playing ball with these people. Uh, and it was amazing. It'd be like stuff that makes no sense in the natural world. I mean, it's completely, you know, magic, you know, on that level. Um, you know, it was coming from people like this and who are then trying to act like your friend while they're, you know, <laughs> while the knife in the back. You know? Actually, that's something that I was introduced actually from your podcast was what's called this gang stalking is that, uh, you, there is, there is some, somehow there's a coordinated effort by people who are unrelated to each other to harass, uh, people generally. I would say, you know, Christians, I mean, real ones, I mean, people who, who are the Lord, you call them the lambs, I like that idea, people who are on the Lord's side, and um, and yet, they're not a, necessarily, like, they don't have, like, walkie-talkies, and they're talking to each other, they just happen to, they'll see you, and from their inside, evil, whatever, will go, like, that person I want to harass, you know, there seems to be this 
the background coordination oh. using people who aren't really realized on it. And at, at first, I I never looked at it that way because I never thought I was that special. Just me, right? And a lot of guys in radio, you know, their black helicopters are following them because they're so great of uh, of a truth seekers and you know all this stuff. And I was just turned off by the whole eagle thing. But I had some stuff happen to me that aren't necessarily as uh, dramatic. But I have no explanation of why an event will happen, health event, series of troubles, uh, uh, breakdowns, and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And it's a really intense. And inside me, I feel this really pressure, like break, crack, give up, stop. You know, there's just, there's this pressure. Yeah. And at yeah. some point, you know, I've been praying, and Lord help me, and I don't know what's going on. And at some point, it just stops. Not not when I prayed per se, but like at some point it's like God God like Job I guess you know at some point they're like okay you know you've had your shot and it didn't work be gone and then I have this kind of a rebirth feeling afterwards it's like what the hell was that you know and uh, it made sense now when I heard you talking about this whole game story yeah see back then I mean you know now that's that'd be pretty early for most people you know I mean back then I'm I'm you know a teenager. And it's coordinated on a level that you would think very high tech, you know, to 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 coordinate all these elements and people. That-